What's going on guys? Um, so I kind of wanted to give you all a sneak peek at some of the stuff uh, that's coming to the channel. Uh, haven't forgot about the channel. I've just been very busy the last, you know, seven months or so. My dad passed away in December. I am the executor of the state. That's kept me pretty busy taking care of a bunch of that stuff. Uh, then with regular work and family and getting the pool set up and just a bunch of stuff was going on and I didn't have as much time and it's rained like crazy earlier this year. So I couldn't get out to the range as much. It rained like crazy for the last week and it looks like it's going to rain for the foreseeable future. So there's just been a lot going on. No, I'm, the excuses are no excuse, I guess, but there's just been a lot going on, but I have still been buying stuff. This isn't all of it, but I kind of want to give you all a sneak peek at things to come. Now, First and foremost, we're just gonna go over each one of these uh, things and they may come up at different times. I don't know when I'm gonna actually do the videos on them. And most of this stuff, other than stuff I've already done reviews on, I've not shot yet. I like to wait to do my first uh, you know, shots on camera so you get my first initial impression of the firearm. So a lot of the stuff, I've not even shot yet unless I've had it for a long time and actually have done videos on it in the past. First thing we're gonna take a look at is a Springfield Echelon. Uh, my cousin taught me of this. He says it's a great gun. Everybody that reviewed it said it was a great gun. I did get the tactical version with the threaded barrel and the suppressor height night sights. Um, so I did you know, go with a little bit upper end trim level a little bit. Um, I will tell you, uh, my cousin bought the one with the standard barrel and they bought the suppressed barrel for it. He did not get the night sights in his. It's cheaper to go this route, um, but I don't believe that one was out when he bought his. Next, we're gonna take a look at uh, the Canik TTI. I, I picked this up a while back. It has an amazing trigger on it. I've actually done a review of the trigger on this gun. It's not as good as my rival, uh, but I've not shot that yet. Waiting to do it on camera. Next, we have a Canik Combat Elite. Um, I buy the Canics that have that flat trigger, like the Rival and the TTI and the Combat Elite all have this wide, flat face trigger. Um, and that's the Canics I really like to buy. You can see this one doesn't have the plate. Um, I actually ordered a plate because I do have some Sealy optics. Sealy sent me a couple optics to review. This one's on a Glock 34 um, and I got one uh, that I was going to put on this because this one did not have an optic. And when they sent me the plate, the little inserts in the plate came out when I was installing it. I don't know what happened there. Canik's supposed to be sending me another plate. Um, but for some odd reason, uh, that one didn't work. So that's why I don't have a plate on it. It's getting a Sealy optic uh, as soon as it comes in. And that is the correct way to pronounce that. I, I actually asked them because I've seen a ton of people pronounce this a ton of different ways. And uh, Sealy is the correct way. This is the ghost. Um, and a full review of that will be coming soon. I was hoping to get up this weekend and start reviewing this one. This will probably be one of the first ones to come up. Um, but I had a golf tournament and I forgot I had a golf tournament that I'd already signed up for. And uh, I didn't get to get to the range uh, yesterday. Uh, keeping track of optics, um, here is one of the new Trigicon HD RMRs or RMR HDs. Um, on my Staccato P. I originally bought this for another pistol and it engulfed it. And we'll go over that pistol next. So I actually bought just a regular RMR to go on that and I uh, stuck the HD on this. Now this does overhang the chamber just a little bit, the ejection port. And Trigicon says, don't do that. But I've seen a lot of people run them on Staccatos with no problem. So we're gonna see if this causes a problem, if it does, we'll take it off and put it on a Glock 17 or something. I've got a 17 that I have set up for like my, you know, crap hit the fan gun with the RMR on it. I'll throw the RMR on this and this on that. Uh, but what I originally had bought that for was this little beauty, which is a Staccato CS. And I went ahead and put an RMR on it. Not because it overhanged a little bit, because that HD was just so much bigger. It just looked horrible. And uh, I wasn't sure it actually fit in the holsters that I had ordered for this. Uh, it was stuck forward so far and it was so big. So I went ahead and bought an RMR to go on this with a TLR7 uh, sub. Uh, this very well could be my next carry gun for a long time because it is amazing. I've not fired it yet again, waiting to hopefully do that on camera. I hope I can wait that long, uh, but that that is amazing. 
Um, also, sticking with Staccato, this is a C2. I've already reviewed it, but it does have an EPS on it. I bought uh, several EPSs uh, before I really did my research, and I hate the way they mount because you have to have a plate. Um, this isn't a total review of the product. I've not used this optic yet, but you can see a second plate underneath that, and that is the way they mount, and I don't like that. Staccato is not making plates for the EPS. They're making them for the EPS carry. Uh, which is right here on my AXG Legion 365. Um, it's it's a good little optic, but I think it's too small for some of these bigger guns, and I don't know why Staccato only made plates for these. I guess the CS might have been all right with one of these. Um, the reason I went with the RMR was because I found this one on sale um, at, at Nagel's Gun Shop, brand new for $200 off, but it had the tall sights. So I just went with the RMR and I'm good with that. Um, I like the RMR. It's not an enclosed optic, but it's a proven optic. So I'm good with the RMR on that. But we'll be doing a full review of this gun, a review of this light, and a review of this optic. This gun feels amazing in the hand. Uh, then we have a Wilson Combat SFX-9. Uh, this is a pretty cool little gun, uh, but one thing I do want to show you on this, I sent it back to Wilson, and the good people at Wilson put my dad's name and years of life on it, and they also put my dog's name and years of life on that side with a little paw print. Um, I think that's pretty cool. I wanted to commemorate both of them before they passed away this past year um with something very special and i felt like a wilson combat uh kind of did that and uh had their name and dates engraved and the slide was refinished by wilson combat um just a cool little pistol don't know how much i'll shoot it uh but it's something special to me because they did that um for me at wilson wilson are great people and uh they really helped me out there uh next is an fn 510 i wanted a different five or different 10 millimeter uh, to carry in the woods because when I go shoot, um, I actually carry 10 millimeter because there are bears in North Carolina. And uh, this thing really fit the bill. Again, haven't shot it yet, wanted to do it on camera, uh, but really, really like how the FNs feel. And I also want to say the trigger on this is way better than the 509s. They need to put that trigger in all the 509s because my 509 feels like it's got sand in it. Now, the last thing I want to go over and show you guys, I actually picked this up like a day before yesterday. Um, it was raining, so I went to Bud's Gun Shop, and they had this Sig Sauer uh, 716. Sorry about that. It's like, I don't know why there's so much traffic on this road. Uh, but they had this Sig Sauer 716 patrol rifle um, on, you know, used. It looks brand new. I mean, the thing looks... I mean, even the bolt looked new in it. And I was like, holy crap, it came with flip up sights, but I put a Trigicon um, LPVO on it. Adjustable gas block that had a surefire brake already on it, came with a forward grip. Uh, the only thing about it is the stock, they pinned it for some odd reason and it's not adjustable. So I did have to order another buffer tube and I bought a BCM stock for it. Uh, don't know why someone would do that. It is very rigid. Maybe they wanted to make sure there wasn't no play in it when they were shooting it. If that's what it was, they successfully did that. But you can see the, the pins right there that they stuck through the bottom of it. I don't know why they did that, but that blows my mind. But this little bad boy right here was only like $999. It's a 308. Uh, these guns new were like $2,100, $2,200. And, uh, it looks brand new. And when I seen that, I was like, holy crap. Now this is a Gen 1. It has the quadrille on the front. The Gen 2s came with a different rail. Uh, and the bottom of the trigger guard was a little bit more cut out or, or enlarged for like glove shooting. Um, I don't care about that. I can buy my own trigger guard. This one comes out, the other one doesn't. It's made into the gun. So actually I would prefer to be able to put my own in. And I actually prefer uh, cheese grater quad rails over, um, I think the other one actually had, if I'm not mistaken, key mod. <clears throat> so I much prefer uh, quad rail over key mod in my opinion. So this has been the one I would have wanted anyway, it has QD attachments and stuff. Um, I've been looking for something of a bigger caliber. I had several rounds of 308. 
I was actually looking at 6.5 Creedmoor auto guns, um, an LMT, and they were like four grand or a little more. And I did not have any 6.5 ammo and I did have 308. So when I run across this for such a good deal, I was not going to pick up this at all. I was going to pick up an RMR and uh, I couldn't pass this up. So I picked up a 308 battle rifle. Um, SIG and it, it should be a fairly good rifle from what I've seen. There's some proprietary stuff on this. I do want to change the charging handle to an Ambi and I may have to go with a SIG Sour uh, charging handle because I think that's a proprietary part on this and I'll probably put a Geisley trigger in it to get a little bit better trigger. Um, other than that and changing out the buffer tube uh, this gun is probably about the way it is. I, one more thing, I will change out the comp. I like Surefire comps but um, I do have a suppressor that I can run on this, so I'll be getting a uh, dead air uh, comp for the end of it or a flash hider, I'm not sure which way I'm gonna go with it. And uh, that way I can run my suppressor on it. If it wasn't for that, I would leave this comp on it. Um, but since I have a suppressor that I can run on this, um, I will change that as well. Again, guys, that's just a few things coming. Um, there are more things that I have in there that I bought for the channel that I've not showed you here but I did kind of want to give you a run of what's coming. There's quite a bit of stuff in the work. This is going to keep me busy for quite a while. Um, so I hope you all didn't leave. Uh, I know I've been absent from YouTube. Periodically, I would show up and leave and show up and leave. Um, but it's just been a real busy year and it's, it's been an emotional year and it's kind of been hard to get back in the swing of things. Um, I, I'm mostly, I'm ready to do it again. Time-wise, um, it's still hard to find time to do it all, uh, but this stuff will be coming very, very soon. I appreciate you guys watching this video. Please like, share, and subscribe. I love you guys. We'll see you next time.